Greetings. I would like to welcome you to our daily weekday Mass, held here at the National Shrine of St. Therese on the Carmelite campus in Darien, Illinois. The Carmelites cherish praying and celebrating with you. This shrine is the blessing of a generous gift from the Margie and Robert Peterson Foundation. Around us and let go of anything that takes our mind or our heart away from where our feet are in this place. I want to welcome those who are gathered here at the National Shrine of St. Therese and those who are watching on the internet. For the Lord has gathered us together to praise him in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we gather before the Word of God this morning, let's reflect on the times that we kind of uh, don't really want to buy the good news because it, it kind of goes contrary to what a lot of other people say about us. For the times we're not faithful to the truth as revealed about God's unconditional love, we ask the Lord for the embrace of divine mercy. Lord, you are always present deep within us and all around us, and yet sometimes we refuse to believe it. We think we're not worthy enough. We think we have to earn it or somehow deserve it instead of acknowledging it as your free, unconditional gift. And so we ask your forgiveness as we pray, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sin and bring us into life everlasting. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to, give, and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. And we ask you this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit as our one God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, I am amazed that you are so quickly forsaking the one who called you by the grace of Christ for a different gospel, not that there is another. But there are some who are disturbing you and wish to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel other than the one that we preach to you, let that one be accursed. As we have said before, and now I say again, if anyone preaches to you a gospel other than the one that you received, let that one be accursed. Am I now carrying favor with human beings or God? Or am I seeking to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a slave of Christ. Now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel preached by me is not of human origin. For I did not receive it from a human being, nor was I taught it, but it came through a revelation of Jesus Christ, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord will remember his covenant forever. 
the Lord, Lord will remember, remember his, his covenant, covenant forever. forever. I will give thanks to the Lord with all my heart in the company and assembly of the just. Great are the works of the Lord, exquisite in all their delights. The Lord, Lord will remember his covenant. his covenant forever. The works of his hands are faithful and just. Sure are all his precepts, reliable forever and ever, wrought in truth and equity. The Lord, the Lord will, will remember, remember his, his covenant, covenant forever. forever. He has sent deliverance to his people. He has ratified his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. His praise endures forever. The, the Lord, Lord will, will remember, remember his, his covenant, covenant forever. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. The reading is taken from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. There was a scholar of the law who stood up to test Jesus and said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? And he said to him in reply, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus replied, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But because he wished to justify himself, he said to Jesus, well, then who is my neighbor? And Jesus replied, there was a man who felt victim among robbers as he went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. They stripped and beat him and they went off leaving him half dead. Now a priest happened to be going down that road, but when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. And likewise, a Levite, came to the place, and when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. But a Samaritan traveler who came upon him was moved with compassion at the sight. So he approached the victim, he poured oil and wine over his wounds, and he bandaged them. And then he lifted him up on his own animal, took him to an inn, and cared for him. And the next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper with the instruction, please take care of him. If you spend more than what I have given you, I shall repay it on my way back. Now, which of these three, in your opinion, was neighbor to the robber's victim? And he answered the one who treated him with mercy. And Jesus said, go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. The readings continue to be a challenge, as the Word of God totally is. You know, first of all, you get Paul to the Galatians. Paul's experience was that God went after him, and God, Jesus revealed himself to him in the human person, and don't persecute, you know, the association of Jesus. If, if you're persecuting them, you're persecuting me. The association of Jesus with the whole body, with all these people. And so I think we have to remember that. And then you can see him later in the Galatian reading, because as time went on, people said, well, it isn't that free. You got to pay a price. You know, but he talked about the free gift of God's love, of if just accepting it, just saying, yes, I know you love me. I know you're present to me. And, and so other people came by, and you can, you know, this reading, the background of it is a lot of other people came by with other teachings. Oh, you're not good enough for it. You have to do this. You have to do it my way. I've got a new law. Here's a ritual you have to do. Here's something. You got to go through me. And, and they kept saying, well, Paul, they told us this. They told us that. And Paul's saying, stop it. I told you the truth, the freedom, the absolute freedom and unconditional love of God. See, we love to place conditions, first of all, on ourselves. We don't love ourselves enough. So we think, well, we're unworthy, we gotta do this, we gotta go to Mass, we gotta do the sacraments, we gotta do this, we gotta do that. No, you don't. Those things help awaken us to a presence, but they don't make it happen. And they're not conditions of God's love and God's mercy and that's presence. And I think we have to look at that. That's why he keeps saying that. Take the revelation for what it was, not what, what pe human beings wanna make of it. And we all make things of it. Our own church and many organizations do it. They say, well, you gotta do this thing, because here's what we do. 
Well, what if you don't do it? You know, it doesn't mean you're not. It's supposed to awaken you to the core, because he's always trying to get to the truth. Paul, the, Paul, the Pauline approach, and he was the first theologian, really, of the Christian community, the followers of Jesus, was really get to the heart of it and stop getting lost. Because everybody else, oh, no, you've got to follow these eight of the 613 commandments of the Torah. You've got to do this ritual. You've got to do this. You've got to do things. No, you don't. You know, it's already there. And Jesus said, I'm in you and you're in me. And then you get this same thing repeated in the Lucan Gospel. Because one of the teachers of the law kept saying, you know, what, what's this all about? What's it about? Because Jesus was cutting to the core of it again. Like any good prophet, any good preacher, he goes to the core of the message. And he, but he throws it right back at him. What's written? And he says, what's, what, what do you know? What's the heart of the law, the Torah, as you understand? And he says, to love your Lord your God with your heart, being, strength, and mind, and your neighbor as yourself. You know, puts that whole thing one. You can't do one without the other. And then, of course, he does the obvious question. Well, who's my neighbor? Who do I really have to love? Don't we all ask that question? <laughs> do they have to be Catholic? Are they my friends? Are they Filipino? Are they Italian? You know, and we kind of like to set boundaries. And he does a wonderful, this story would have shocked him. If we've said, we heard that story today, you'd say someone was shot downtown in Chicago, and the priest went by, and of course the priest had his reason. He said, oh, I'll be richly impure, I can't do my job. The Levite's saying the same thing. Oh, you can't touch blood, he's bloody. You know, they all had these reasons why they didn't respond to the human need of someone there. And then who is it? And then it says, an Afghan Islamic terrorist. Because <laughs> that's exactly what the Jews thought the Samaritans were. So we here today. He came by and he said, oh my God, there's somebody hurting. And he heals, you know, he... He, he takes care of him. He makes sure he's take, he does it himself, and then he makes sure he's taken care of. So he's stretching the limit. That would blow their minds. We're so used to the Good Samaritan story, but it doesn't even hit us sometimes. But that there's no condition or no limits and boundaries on the way we love one another, how we be there for one another, with both charity and, and healing and challenge and honesty, but not exclusion. You know, we can't. And we're living in a world that, that had kind of deifies division. It's us against them. And even our society is riddled with this, us against them. And I think God, Jesus weeps over that. And we should weep over that. So look today as everybody you're going to meet this day. How do you deal with them? What judgments do you make about them? Especially judgments that exclude that don't either serve them or love them in the best way, the wholeheartedness of the message of Jesus. So I think, look, and, and it comes, and it's not something we have to create, it's something that is given to us. We were, from all eternity, the divine DNA within us has always known good and responds to the rest of God's people. The peace of the divine in you resonates with the peace of the divine in me. And so I think we have to remember that, no matter what we think about them or who we think they are, or why we think they don't belong. But first of all, you have to believe it yourself. We have to be in touch with the reason we come to Eucharist, and why our Eucharist is so important in our Roman Catholic tradition, is the Word of God that, that speaks to us. It speaks, here's what the revelation is. And it's usually challenging if we listen to it. We don't try to gross it out or milk it down. And then we share in this sacrament the very body and blood of the Son of God that says, you are what you eat. Do you know who you are? the blessed and beloved of God. Not just here when you're in church, but every moment and every breath of life. And so I think we have to look at the sacredness of it and, and hopefully that it deepens our faith in what this truly is about. That we are the blessed and beloved of God. And therefore to live like God and love God with our whole heart, being, strength and mind, and to love everyone that God brings into our life and our way this day. Jesus promised that whenever we gather together in faith, Abba, our Father, would listen to us, and so let us pray. Let's first of all pray for peace in our world, and wherever people suffer from the violence, injustice, and historic misunderstanding of others. For them, let us, for peace, let us pray to the Lord. Let's gather together in our hearts everybody we know who need the healing power of the Lord Jesus mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, or relationally, especially those suffering from the, 
the COVID-19 virus. For them, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for those people who are attending to people who are suffering from the virus, families that are mourning them even from outside, waiting for them when they can't reach them. And for those who are working on a virus or whatever that's going to help make all of us safe in each other's presence, let us pray to the Lord. I'd like to pray for all the members of the Little Flower Society and for all people who support the life and the ministries of the Carmelites here and throughout the world. Let us pray to the Lord. And let us pray that we notice that we act more like the Good Samaritan than by the righteous people who seem to exclude and ignore or indifferent to the pain of others. Let us pray to the Lord. And in silence, let us pray for our own private and personal intentions. For them, let us pray to the Lord. Gracious and faithful God, thank you for always listening to us. And we ask you to continue to manifest your presence in our life by responding to the needs that we place here before you and those that lie unspoken and even unknown in the silence of our hearts. And we ask you this through Christ our Lord. And through the mingling of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbles himself to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread and wine to offer. Fruit of the earth and vine and work of human hands, they will become for us our spiritual food and drink. We ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. And my sisters and brothers, let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to the Holy One, our God. O Lord, accept the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through these sacred mysteries, which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us. And we ask you this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son by whose obedience we have been restored to these gifts of yours, and that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exultation we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And you are indeed holy, O Lord, then all that you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and by the power and working of your Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For we remember and give thanks that on the night that he was betrayed, that Jesus himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, he broke the bread, 
and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. And we remember and give thanks that in that same way, that before that supper was ended, that Jesus took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing. And he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sin may be forgiven. And do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. And therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his coming in glory, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. And look, we pray on this offering of your church, recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, and grant that we who are nourished by the body and the blood of your Son may be filled with his Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. And may he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her blessed, her blessed spouse, with the blessed apostles, the glorious martyrs, St. Therese, and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. And Lord, may this sacrifice of our reconciliation advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, Ronald our Bishop, and the entire people that you claim as your own. And listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've gathered here today in person or virtually. In your compassion, O most merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed sisters and brothers, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. For there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, from whom you bestow on the world all that is good. For we join in the sacrifice of Jesus, because we know, we believe, and we proclaim through him with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And inspired by divine teaching, let's pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And Lord, deliver us from all evil and from all fear, from whatever prevents us from knowing you and from loving one another. We ask for your mercy. We ask for your peace, so that we can live all of our days joyfully awaiting and experiencing the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now. And Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles and to your friends, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church gathered here, and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And let us offer each other some sign of Christ's peace. Remember the people out there. <laughs> Lamb of God, where the sins of the world.
This is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who has taken away the sin, darkness, and division of our world. This is Jesus who comes to us again this day to awaken us to the, the presence of God in every breath and every experience and person of our life. And blessed are we who are called to this banquet of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be. And let us pray. Almighty Father, grant us that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament that which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we have consumed. And we ask you this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and all days of our lives. And let's pray to Mary, our sister in faith, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. This Eucharist is ended. Let's go in peace and glorify the Lord by the way we live our lives. Thank you guys for coming. Don't want to do it alone. There's six of them. I'm okay, I'm okay, I just need to. <laughs>